came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. If you have taken step one, if you watched the first video, or if generally you're just on your journey of recovery and you can admit that you have a problem, if you can acknowledge that you need help and you are willing to do things that you have not already tried, then you are ready for step two. And again, I will repeat, step two states, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Welcome to this video. My name is Mike. Uh, this is the Starts With Me channel. I am someone in long-term recovery from addiction. I just passed 11 years. I am also a psychotherapist and I try to make videos and I work with people on trying to increase their capacity for well-being and resilience. So if you followed the last video, which was step one, awesome. Thank you for watching. And we're on to step two. If you have not watched the first video, I encourage you to do so. Although that does not mean this video will not be helpful for you. Okay, so we are going to start reading again from the Marijuana Anonymous Life with Hope book. And we're going to start with step two today. So let us begin. Step two was our introduction to the principles of open-mindedness and hope. In step one, we confronted our addiction, admitting that we were powerless over marijuana and that our lives have become unmanageable. We were then left with two alternatives, to stay as we were and continue using marijuana until we died, or to seek spiritual help. Once we admitted our powerlessness, we had to find a power greater than ourselves by which we could live. We knew that our human will alone had never been sufficient to manage our addiction. We began to realize that only a higher power could help us. Now, many people have a hard time with this step because they think they are powerful, or if they acknowledge they need help from an external source, it's some sort of admittance of weakness or failure. I think there's two sides to that story, okay? Yes, it is a failure. You're an addict and you can't stop getting high. So smashing our ego is part of this process. Although at the same time, admitting these things, letting go of our self-centered self -centered ego, asking for help, acknowledging that we can't do this alone anymore is a sign of strength. It is it is a form of power. You are taking action and you are moving in the direction of healing and no longer being dominated by the self-centered will. To me, this idea of a higher power can simply be boiled down to not our ego, not our self-will. Because if you are an addict and you've been trying to stop and you can't stop and you're going through all the insanity that comes along with that, it's clear that your self-will and ego is not working and is only making matters worse. So this process, this step two, is simply letting go of the ego, turning to a higher power. It doesn't per se matter what it is. It could be a group. It could be a tree. It could be the universe. It's just not your self-centered will and ego. I will continue reading. Okay. When we came to meetings and listened to others, we identified with the insanity of addiction as described by the members of the fellowship. We began to grudgingly admit that we were selfish and self-centered too, just like the other addicts in the group. We were spiritually bankrupt and needed help. We could now see that our marijuana abuse had continued long after we realized we had a problem. I'm going to stop for a second. I wanted to re-address this sentence here. We could now see that our marijuana abuse had continued long after we realized that we had a problem. I don't know about you, but for me, basically after I started getting high at 12 years old, 
by 13, it was very clear to me that I had a serious problem. I was a chronic user from about 13 all the way to 30 to the day that I stopped. It was very clear to me that I had a problem. And from about 15 years old on, maybe a bit less, a girlfriend was telling me how bad I was, how concerned she was for me because she could see me deteriorating. I knew I had a problem and my conscience kept telling me for 15 years, you need to stop. This is not good. This is not good. You need to stop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know what that's like for you, but checking in with this internal voice, this internal dialogue around, you know, you need to stop. You know, you can't stop. You know, you want to stop. And the fact that you can't is torturing you. That's what we're trying to point out here and allude to in this part of the text. Okay, I will continue. So we had continued using, even as we became ever more resentful, isolated, paranoid, slothful, and desperate. Sounds pretty much like you, maybe like me, like most of us, okay? In one way or another, we exhibit these behaviors, these emotions, these ways of being, okay? No matter how great the need or the wish to stop, the thought of using eventually pushed aside all the reasons why we should. We always had to have a supply on hand and felt horribly guilty that we couldn't stop using. Our insanity was evident as we repeated the same behavior over and over, yet somehow expected different results. Some of us had, some of us even had bad experiences each time we smoked, but managed to suppress them somehow before we used again. This is part of that process when you wake up and you say, okay, I'm not going to smoke today. Today's the day that I don't smoke. And then by 10 a.m., you're starting to get the itch by 11, by noon. And then all the reasons and all the things that you told yourself you weren't going to do, you're starting to do again. And that pattern is part of this avoidance mechanism that the mind creates to make ourselves feel better to avoid feeling resentful and guilty and paranoid and desperate and all those kind of things. And it feels like shit. It's horrible. Okay. So if that is your experience, is it possible to open up here to listen, to acknowledge there's another way? Okay. So we came to realize that trying to fix our lives with marijuana hadn't worked. Marijuana had once seemed to be the most effective way to help us cope with the problem of living, at least temporarily. When we stopped using marijuana, we didn't automatically feel worthwhile and full of purpose. Our overwhelming feelings, character defects, and negative actions were still there. Sometimes they seemed even stronger than before because we had no anesthetic to dull them. We were not problem users whose problems went away when we threw away our stash. When we stopped using, we found we had a problem with living. We were addicts. What a wonderful statement here, okay? Because there's a great saying in addiction, drugs are not the problem, okay? Cannabis is not your problem. It is your solution. Your problem is you. Your problem is your emotions. Your problem is all these problems with living that you don't know how to cope with. And right now, your only solution is to get high. So the cannabis is your solution to your problems, which is you, which is in you, which is your emotions, which is the way you perceive reality and the way you carry yourself in the world. It is such an important thing to drill into your mind. Okay, cannabis is not the problem. It's the solution. And you need a new solution. Okay, your problem is you, your attitudes, the way you conduct yourself. Okay, and this pathway, this spiritual pathway provides a solution, a wonderful solution that is dumbed down to simple language for silly, lost addicts or people like ourselves. 
this program contains ancient wisdom across cultures across the globe and it's again distilled into a simple process for us to get and for us to embody and when we embody these principles in all our affairs our lives or our lives transform radically okay we began to see the possibility that our beliefs about ourselves formed while using had been mistaken we saw that our perceptions had been based in delusion. Some of us had withdrawn physically with little social contact. Some of us had isolated emotionally, not allowing anyone to get close to us. And some had hidden behind a front of functionality. While in our hearts, we felt trapped and incapable of controlling our using. Sometimes this front took the form of aggressive or defensive attitudes, sometimes of passive or indifferent attitudes. These were the symptoms of our disease. We had never been able to find the power necessary to change. Just to point out quickly here, this aggressive or defensive attitudes. When somebody perhaps says something to you about Perhaps you're smoking too much weed, you get all defensive, you start arguing with them, you start justifying all the weed using and telling them why they're wrong and why you're right and why you don't have to face reality. The flip side of that, this passive or indifferent attitude is like, oh, whatever, man, it's just weed, doesn't matter, life's just fucked up anyway, might as well get high and hide and blah, 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 blah. So there's different sides to this puzzle and we all fit in the puzzle in different ways. Okay, so at this point, many of us found ourselves faced with a seemingly overwhelming dilemma. Our higher power had always been either ourselves or our drug. Okay, that's pointing to that self-centered ego thing. Now we were being asked to accept the existence of a new and greater power. Some of us said, I won't believe, some said, I can't believe. And some said, I may believe in the existence of a higher power, but I have no real hope that it will help me. Hmm. People who will not believe in a power greater than their ego are threatened. We tell these people that MA doesn't demand anything. Those of us who did not want faith were reminded that there is no dogma in Marijuana Anonymous. It is not necessary to acquire a major God consciousness to be able to cease using. All we need is to maintain an open mind and a hopeful heart. What a beautiful statement that is. All we need is to maintain an open mind and a hopeful heart. It is not necessary to say yes. It is, however, important to stop saying no. Well, I guess I highlighted those for a reason, but that is so important. Open, hopeful heart. And we don't have to say yes to this idea of a higher power per se. But what we need to do is to stop saying no. No, that won't work for me. No, that person's stupid. No, that person's wrong. No, that person doesn't understand me. No, the existence of some interconnected web of the universe is not going to help me. No, 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 no. We need to stop fucking knowing ourselves into misery and despair and hopelessness. Okay, we just need to stop saying no and open to the possibility that there is a pathway. Okay, so I will continue. Okay, higher power means different things to different people. To some of us, it is a god of an organized religion. To others, it is a state of being commonly called spirituality. Some of us believe in no deity. A higher power may be the strength gained from being part of and caring for a community of others. There is, there is room in MA for all beliefs. We do not proselytize any particular view or religion. In MA, each of us discovers a spirit of humility and tolerance 
and each of us finds a higher power that works for us. Wow, what a beautiful phrase here. A spirit of humility and tolerance. That could transform the world, no doubt. But it can also transform ourselves. It can, it can help guide us. Okay, we get so stuck in thinking that we're right, that we're superior intellectually, that we're morally superior, yet all we're doing is continuing to act completely the opposite and lying to ourselves, deluding ourselves that we have some secret insight into the world that everyone else doesn't have. They don't understand. And again, that's that self-centered, ego, maniacal, destructive, blah, toxic fucking bullshit that we need to stop deluding ourselves about. Some of us think of the group as our higher power. After all, the group is more powerful than any of its individual members. And over the years, it has developed procedures and traditions that work. Our groups have found a common solution to a common problem. Something that had been impossible for each individual member to accomplish on their own. And practically everyone can easily and naturally draw strength and support from the fellowship. This minimum of belief is enough to open the door and cross the threshold. Once we are on the other side, our belief and trust in a higher power broadens and deepens as we continue taking the steps. Although many of us came to the fellowship already believing in the existence of a higher power, we doubted that it would be of help since it had not helped us to stay clean before. When we were Still using, we prayed each night to stop, yet awakened the next morning and used. You uh, relate to that? Please, God, help me stop. This is horrible. I won't do this again. Please help me. Please help me. Something help. Stop. Please stop. I can't stop. I need help. Ah. I don't know if you relate to that madness of trying to escape reality and beg for something to help you. <sighs> this is where we learn to let go. Some of us were just too smart for our own good. We thought we had it all figured out. We felt intellectually superior. I can do anything I set out to do. Knowledge is power. Yet we were faced with the paradox of our own addiction. Our best thinking brought us to our bottom. What we learned is that recovery from addiction requires resources beyond the capacities of any one individual addict. <sighs> right? If your super smart, intellectual, brilliant mind has got you to this point, do you think it's all of a sudden going to like free you and <laughs> solve the problem magically all of a sudden? Oh, if I just do this, I'll be able to stop. Oh, I'm so smart. I can think my way out of anything, right? That's your addiction. Some people would say trying to kill you or trying to keep you miserable. And as human beings, we don't do things alone. This idea that we're, or that people do things on their own is ludicrous and ridiculous. Yes, we have some agency over our behavior and our decisions, Although we are creatures of the universe, we're interconnected to each other as beings, as animals, okay, to nature, nobody exists on their own. You don't choose your parents, you don't choose where you were born, you don't choose all the things that sort of make you who you are. So can you, again, let go of this insane sense of ego self-centeredness and this idea that you have all this agency over your addiction okay still others had become disgusted with religion we could only see hypocrisy nonsense bigotry or self-righteousness i that was me for a very long time and perhaps still little bits of it so this is not about religion this is not about religion. Okay. But, a but upon closer examination, we found blossoms of truth and beauty hidden among the thorns. 
we discovered that some of these arguments were simply devices to feed our own egos, actually making us part of the problem. They were ways of feeling superior. Ironically, we were the ones who had become self-righteous. It was time to open our minds. Then there were those of us who, had, who came to the program still seeing ourselves as being very religious. Yet again, we too were faced with the question of why we had been unable to overcome the disease of addiction. Obviously, our religion alone hadn't been the answer. Gradually, as we listened to other recovering addicts, we became willing to do what was needed. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Marijuana Anonymous gives us no definition of a power greater than ourselves. We practice spiritual principles, not religion. We have no theological doctrines. What we do have is a realization that we had never been able to stay clean on our own. We needed a higher power to do that. We realized that it would be arrogant to think that there was no power greater than ourselves in the universe. There is room in MA for all beliefs or none. It doesn't matter if we are agnostic, atheist, or theist. We all have a place here. There is no conflict. For each of us, a power greater than ourselves is whatever we choose it to be. It can be any positive, powerful thing that we are comfortable with. As we began recovering, we let go of convincing others what the greater power was and instead focused on how to use that power in recovery. We had sane minutes, hours, days, and weeks. We either found the way to a new faith or renewed our old one. We saw that a power greater than ourselves was doing for us what we could never do alone. We saw that force working in our lives and in the lives of others. For step two, we had only needed to answer the questions. Do I now believe? Or am I open to believing in a power greater than myself? After that, we were ready for step three. Okay, so if you were or are open to believing in a power greater than yourself and this self-centered ego and self-centered will, then you are ready for step three, but you are also ready to start healing. There's, there's this strange like interwoven connectedness of holding tight to thinking that you can still do it or control it on your own and letting go of that control and letting go and opening yourself to solutions to things beyond your addicted mind beyond what you think is possible and what can you can imagine helping you a quick note on on a higher power in my life i certainly had a serious problem with the word god because of my own perceptions of what that word meant over the past decade and more, I have come to an understanding of what this means to me. And again, I said it earlier, but really all it means is not my self-centered ego, not my self-centered will. And it means other people. It means the universe. It means opening to the mystery and the awe that is consciousness, that is experience, that is how I am connected to the interconnected web of existence, whatever that means, okay? It's really just simply not my self-will. And I cultivate this connection, this understanding by opening myself up, by letting go of my ego, by allowing my self-centeredness to pass through me so that I can be open, willing, and honest about myself and the world around me to the best of my ability. And there is something incredibly soothing and healing and powerful about this letting go. Again, it's that paradox of the more we let go, the more powerful we become because we're open to possibilities and we're not held tightly by this 
grip of insanity and self-centeredness. Okay, so please, if you like this video, comment on it, share it, like it. Please subscribe to this channel. I would love that. I would love your support. And if you have any questions, please, again, comment in the comment section. Send an email to Mike at startswithme.ca. Check out our resources on the website. Check out our other videos on weed addiction. I hope you continue this journey with me. Thank you so much for your time and for watching. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.